With Deloitte and OutSystems working together, your company's technological innovation will exceed every challenge. Find new market opportunities while you get state-of-the-art tailored technology to improve your business's models and revenue sources. Guarantee sustainable growth processes while overcoming new demands by having scalable platforms and enable engaging experiences that will increase your sales, loyalty, and customer service. Digitization is now. Deloitte OutSystems will help you thrive. Join us to find out. Hi, I'm Elena Percival, CEO and co-founder of Women Who Code. I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia in the US, and I'd love if you'd take a second and just share in the chat where you're joining from today. Also, before I get started, I wanna thank OutSystems for having me here and do a little shameless promotion. OutSystems has committed to donating to a handful of fantastic nonprofits throughout this event, including Women Who Code. The way you can help make sure that we all get the maximum donation is to find Neo. Neo is hiding in the conference app. So whenever you see Neo, please go in and, and click. It makes a difference for us nonprofits and the funds that Women Who Code receives is gonna go to cover coding scholarships, helping members who are transitioning into the industry. So to date, Women Who Code has given away over $2 million in these transformative scholarships. When I think back to one of our first scholarships that we ever gave away, um, it was to a woman who was a single mother and living below the poverty level. She now is a software engineer who's worked at top technology organizations. When I think about what that means for her career trajectory, for her family and her generational wealth, it is astounding and something that I'm deeply committed to. So right now, these scholarships are more important than ever because around one in seven people around the world are actively trying to move into a new industry. They are seeking opportunities that are flexible and considered to be future-proof like tech. And many of you here today might know someone who is in this process of thinking about a career transition. So I encourage you, please let them know about Women Who Code. Tell them to sign up for our newsletter where we give away our, our coding scholarships because this is a fantastic career path. And some estimates are even sh showing that almost half of workers are going to change jobs uh, over the next year. Women Who Code has always been about inspiring diverse technologists to excel in technology careers. Today, women are being left behind. Black and Latinx women and marginalized communities around the world are being disproportionately impacted. When diverse women are included at the top, it's more likely that their companies will reflect this diversity overall, and also that bias will be identified and reduced from internal practices and the products that you use every day. Right now, we're seeing a gap that's widening. About a third of women are feeling stalled and thinking about leaving tech within the year. Sadly, about half actually will leave by mid-career. Often women report that they are the only in the room at about the rate of 30%, but that feeling is further exacerbated by inter intersectionality. Not women who code, we believe in making space for diverse voices. We believe that when you are part of a community like women who code, that you can actually feel that you belong in this industry and that it makes a difference. Because of that, we are deeply committed to making sure diverse women have access to tools, resources, and a network that can help them move up the ladder into positions 
of power and influence that can shape their companies and our industry. A key rung in the leadership ladder that continues to be ignored is the move up from individual contributor to the first level of leadership. Men are hired based on their potential, while women are often hired based on their demonstrated experience. Because of this bias, diverse women need a pathway to demonstrate leadership and practice it. And that is exactly what we've built. So let's reimagine together. We know the tech industry is one of the most exciting high growth industries that is shaping the future. We need more people. We need more leaders. You belong here and we need and want you to thrive. Women Who Code is celebrating 10 years of community this year. 10 years of supporting a stronger representation of diverse women in technology and leadership. We originally started out as a small community group in San Francisco, and we would meet to learn, develop a sense of belonging, build connections. All of this would result in engineering projects and career opportunities and often friendships. In 2013, we formed the nonprofit that has become this global NGO because we firmly believed that people all over the world deserve to have access to this powerful community. Our mission is to inspire women to excel in technology careers. Our vision is one of a world where diverse women are better represented as engineers and technology leaders. We are the largest and most active community of technical women in the world. And we create real change in our community, industry, and in people's lives. Because I truly believe in making space for diverse women in technology and leadership is the easiest way to advance equality for women and girls. We've leaned in to the forced disruption over the past two years to create a fully remote program delivery channel that is enabling us to scale our programs. Because of that, we originally were only reaching about 25 countries. And today, since that digital transformation, we've grown to serve members in 134 countries around the world. This took place as we first imagined it, as a nonprofit that women around the world deserve to have access to. But then when we reimagined it, when we went entirely digital, making it possible for women who weren't just in tech hubs, but also in cities and towns all over the world who had access to internet, to have access to our programming. Women Who Code has grown to serve 290,000 members globally. We never would have experienced this rapid expansion if it were not for the incredible volunteers who are both building and part of this community. I encourage you to connect with them and become one. Our volunteers often within a year of stepping into the skill-based volunteering experience rapid ex career acceleration to the tune of promotions, direct channel of dialogue to leaders and executives inside of their organization, um, speaking opportunities, awards. Some of my favorite stories are about one of our leaders who, who stepped up and she had a master's in CS. So she was inside of the box, exactly who you think would be moving into leadership roles, but she was incredibly shy. So. At her first Women Who Code event, she kind of stood there and said, oh, my name's Erica, feel free to ask me questions and sat down. But she practiced leadership and within one year, she was being invited to and delivering tech talks to standing room only crowds. 
also think of one of our leaders in Mexico City who told me in under one year, her salary had increased 200%. One of my absolute favorite stories is from one of our Toronto directors who was an individual contributor when she took on this volunteer leadership position. And within six months, she was promoted to lead at her company. And in under one year, she had gotten a job at the director level. This was an incredibly talented woman with a lot of uh, trajectory in her career, but this demonstrated leadership accelerated her career path and made sure that she achieved her potential. Diverse women make up approximately 6.3 million technologists globally. So imagine if by being a member of Women Who Code and investing in yourself, you received a little over a $3,000 pay increase annually. That makes Women Who Code's annual market impact $1 billion. Our focus is supporting women who are in the workforce today. And this comes with the knowledge that if we do nothing, half of these women will leave their technology careers at about the 10 year mark. So we have a big opportunity to have a tremendous impact through our work. Every time we're able to retain, every time we're able to create a sense of belonging, build skills and ultimately retain a woman in the industry. Her lifetime earning increases by $1.7 million. So imagine if we retained 50% of our community who are most likely to leave, we would be directly helping to add $250 billion of wealth for diverse women and their families globally. We have Women Who Code puts on an average of five free technical events every single day. So please consider joining throughout the year, keeping up the momentum that you're feeling from this conference, developing your skills and building connections. Uh, the photo in this slide is, was taken at a Women Who Code Manila event. And at the end of the event, a woman came forward to our directors and thanked them. And she actually was close to tears and said that she had been planning to leave the industry. At that event, she was reminded that she belonged and now she intended to stay. That's impact. It's your time now. We have hundreds of companies with technical roles on our job board. And all of these companies are taking steps to increase diversity in their workforce and directly supporting women who code by posting their technical jobs on our job board. So if you are someone who is thinking about your next steps, please visit our job board. And if you are a hiring manager or can activate your voice on your team to encourage diverse hiring, please consider posting some of your, of your best technical roles to the Women Who Code community. Now I, wanna, I want everyone to take away three key messages. First is design the change. Inclusion is not by desire, inclusion is by design. And we are at a unique moment where we can have a tremendous impact. Most companies, are reimagining themselves right now. It's imperative to be bringing equity-centered design into our processes because bias exists. Either we ignore it or we address it, but to ignore it means we are allowing it to weave itself into the fabric of our daily workplace practices, product, and society. I often hear statements about capacity building for girls 
and wanting to build a better future by investing in the next generation. But this process is putting the onus on women and girls saying that if they aren't fixed, if they aren't better, then that's why we're not succeeding. But what we really need to do is an invest in equity-centered design with our daily work place practices to create a cultural shift that allows capable women to thrive and become the role models for that next generation. For example, if you don't have transparent applicant processes or even intentional steps to get diverse applicants into your pipeline, you will end up with a gender asymmetric workforce, especially in technology, especially in leadership. We also know that bias uh, impacts the gender wage gap at the most basic level. A double blind study in 2020 showed still that managers evaluating employees randomly assigned male uh, or employees with typically male names an average of an 8% higher salary. That makes a huge difference for women in their careers. Activate and amplify your voices. Own your story. Together, we can be a connecting force for change. A colleague asked me this week, what's my advice? And without hesitation, I told them to own their story, to share their goals, their dreams. Together, we can be that connecting force for change, for good. Whether it's just to achieve your next promotion or the one after that, or if it's to activate real change inside of your company or inside of your society, you have to tell that story. You work together. Also, one of my mantras that um, I got from my colleague, uh, Kim Bennett, is to take imperfect action. Over the past year, this has been incredibly important because we are at the point where inaction is not acceptable anymore. And we know that we won't always know what the next step is going to be. But if we fail to learn, if we fail to try, we will fail. But together, we will rise by lifting others. So please, dream big. And if it doesn't exist, build it. Thank you. And please join us at womenwhocode.com.